Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live fully as yourself, without apology or hesitation? To wake up each morning free from the weight of others' expectations, looking in the mirror with a sense of peace rather than a mental list of all the ways you could be better? For most of us, this kind of acceptance feels elusive, like a faint dream of freedom that we can almost imagine but struggle to fully embrace. For many of us, self-acceptance seems tangled in a web of memories and beliefs. We carry labels and expectations, some placed on us by others and some created by our own inner critic. These patterns often start early, taking root in childhood, as we navigate the tender years where acceptance means survival, and we learn quickly what it means to fit in. The seeds of self-acceptance, or self-rejection, are often planted in moments so small they might go unnoticed. A glance, a comment, a lesson taught not in words but in subtle, powerful gestures. Over time, these moments shape us, layer by layer, into the version of ourselves we present to the world. And we wear this version like a mask, adjusting and perfecting it until it feels more natural than our true selves beneath it. This book is an invitation to begin the journey of removing that mask, of reconnecting with the self that existed before the world told us who to be. It's about understanding the power of accepting yourself as you are, your strengths and flaws, your quirks and contradictions, and realizing that the freedom you seek is already within you. Self-acceptance isn't about perfection, it's about wholeness. It's about welcoming every part of yourself, even those you've long hidden or rejected, and learning to live authentically, aligned with who you truly are. Throughout this book, written and published by Mindful Literary, we will walk together through the roots of self-perception, tracing back to where it all began. We'll look at the messages you received as a child and how they shaped your self-worth. We'll explore the patterns you adopted to feel accepted and loved and uncover how those patterns may no longer serve you. With each chapter, you'll find tools to help you peel back the layers of conditioning, confront your inner critic, and ultimately find peace with yourself. But this journey won't just be about understanding where you came from. It's about transforming where you are going. As you read, you'll learn to cultivate self-compassion, set healthy boundaries, and embrace your unique strengths and imperfections. You'll be guided to recognize the quiet beauty of vulnerability and the unshakable power that comes from living authentically. Self-acceptance is not a destination you reach. It's a practice, a way of relating to yourself with kindness and honesty. Some days it will feel effortless, like a long exhale, and other days it will feel like a battle. But each step, each moment of acceptance, will bring you closer to a life unburdened by the need to prove yourself. This journey is about discovering the courage to live as yourself, not because you have something to prove, but because you have something to embrace. So, as we embark on this journey together, I invite you to approach it with curiosity and openness. Allow yourself to question, to reflect, and to reconnect with the parts of you that have been waiting for acceptance. This is not just a journey of the mind, but of the heart, a journey home to yourself, to the person you've always been beneath the surface. Let's begin. Chapter 1, Childhood, The Seeds of Self-Worth Self-worth is one of the most profound aspects of our identity, yet its origins are often subtle, woven into the experiences of our earliest years. From the moment we begin to understand language, we are absorbing messages about who we are, what we are capable of, and ultimately, what makes us valuable. These initial encounters, whether through praise, criticism, or even unspoken expectations, become the building blocks of how we perceive ourselves. In childhood, our sense of self is incredibly malleable. We look to parents, teachers, and peers as mirrors, seeking approval and validation, which we then use to shape our self-image. A word of encouragement or a gentle affirmation from a parent can foster a sense of worthiness and confidence. Conversely, a disapproving look, a harsh word, or a comparison to a sibling or classmate can plant seeds of doubt and self-criticism. We internalize these experiences, and they begin to form a set of beliefs, beliefs that often linger well into adulthood, influencing the way we see ourselves and the world around us. Consider, for example, a child who excels academically and is consistently praised for their intelligence. They may start to believe that their worth is tied to academic success, carrying this expectation into adulthood. Alternatively, a child who is frequently compared to a more outgoing sibling might grow up feeling that their quieter nature is somehow less than struggling to embrace their authentic self. Such patterns, once established, can become deeply ingrained, shaping our lives in ways we may not even realize. 
This chapter invites you to look back at your own childhood experiences with curiosity and compassion. Reflect on the messages you received, both explicit and implicit, about your worth, abilities, and place in the world. Ask yourself, what beliefs about yourself did you carry from childhood into adulthood? Are there moments that stand out, times when you felt either validated or diminished? How did these experiences shape your self-perception? Through this reflection, we'll begin to uncover the origins of your self-worth and see where these early beliefs still hold sway. Understanding this foundation isn't about blame or regret, it's about awareness. By identifying the seeds of your self-worth, you open the door to transforming any outdated beliefs that may no longer serve you, allowing you to rebuild a self-image rooted in authenticity and inner acceptance. As we explore these origins, remember that this journey is one of growth, not judgment. The goal is not to dwell on past hurts, but to gain insight into the experiences that have shaped you, so you can gently release any beliefs that no longer align with the person you are becoming. Chapter 2 the impact of family dynamics and conditioning. Our families are the first social systems we encounter, and within these close-knit units, we begin to form our identities. Family dynamics, parental expectations, and sibling relationships all play pivotal roles in shaping who we believe we are and what we feel we must be to belong and be valued. In the context of family, we are often assigned roles or labels, sometimes unspoken, other times openly reinforced, that influence our sense of self and the paths we pursue in life. From a young age, we start to internalize these family roles. Perhaps you were the responsible one, expected to take on more tasks and help others, praised for your maturity but rarely allowed to express vulnerability. Or maybe you were the sensitive one, encouraged to be gentle but discouraged from stepping outside that defined softness. These labels, even if given with good intentions, can box us in, making it difficult to fully explore other sides of ourselves. Over time, they become ingrained, subtly guiding our behavior and limiting our self-expression. Family conditioning also introduces us to the concept of conditional love. Many of us grew up feeling that certain behaviors or achievements were the price of approval. Whether it was excelling in academics, looking a certain way, or following specific expectations, these conditions taught us that love and acceptance could be earned, but also withdrawn. As a result, we may have developed a sense that our worth depends on meeting these conditions, leaving little room for our authentic, imperfect selves. This chapter invites you to examine the roles, labels, and conditions of approval you may have inherited from your family. Think back to the dynamics within your family unit. Were there roles that each family member took on? Did you feel a need to fulfill specific expectations to be loved or accepted? Reflect on these questions. What roles or labels did you take on in your family? How did these shape your identity? Did you feel that approval was tied to specific achievements or traits? How did your siblings' roles or characteristics influence your own self-perception? Once you've identified these influences, consider how they continue to shape you today. Are there roles or beliefs you still hold on to, even if they no longer serve you? For instance, are you still striving to be the responsible one at the expense of your own needs, or suppressing aspects of yourself that don't align with the family's image of you. Exercises for reframing childhood labels. Number one, identify your family roles. Write down any roles or labels that come to mind from your childhood. Next to each one, note how it impacted your actions and beliefs about yourself. Number two, challenge the labels. Ask yourself if these labels truly define who you are. Consider examples from your life where you acted outside of these roles. Remind yourself that your identity is complex and cannot be reduced to a single role. Number three, rewrite your narrative. For each label or role, write a new statement that reflects your true self. If you were the responsible one, perhaps your new statement is, I am allowed to be responsible but also seek support and express vulnerability. This reframing allows you to redefine your identity on your own terms. This chapter is an invitation to let go of family conditioning that limits your self-acceptance. By exploring and challenging these early influences, you create space for a self-image that is rooted in your own truth, not one defined by roles, expectations, or conditional love. This is your journey toward freedom, a step toward embracing who you are without apology. Chapter 3. School and Social Comparisons – The Quest for Belonging School is often where we first step outside the safe boundaries of family life, 
and encounter a broader social world. In this new setting, the need for acceptance and belonging becomes even more pressing. Here, we experience the joys and challenges of friendship, the pressure of fitting in, and the sting of comparison, all of which profoundly shape our developing self-image. From the first day we enter a classroom, we become aware of the social dynamics that permeate school life. We notice who gets praise and attention, who is popular, and who seems to struggle to fit in. These early impressions often mold our beliefs about what we should aspire to, how we should behave, and what makes us worthy of attention or respect. Friendships form, but they also bring with them the possibility of rejection and competition. The desire to belong can lead us to adjust our personality, our appearance, or even our interests, trying to align with what we believe will win approval from others. Consider, for example, the social hierarchy of a typical school environment. There may be groups defined by sports, academic achievement, or social charisma. Being accepted into one of these groups often feels like a badge of worth, while being left out or struggling to find a place can create a sense of isolation. Peer pressure becomes a powerful force, pushing us to conform, suppress parts of ourselves, or act in ways that don't align with who we truly are. Many of us can recall moments in school when we were measured against others, through grades, athletic achievements, or popularity. These comparisons can be formative, shaping the way we evaluate our own worth. Perhaps you excelled academically but felt lacking in social confidence, or maybe you were popular but constantly compared yourself to others who seemed to have it all. These experiences, though rooted in adolescence, often leave lasting marks, subtly guiding our self-esteem and influencing how we view ourselves even into adulthood. Stories of Early Social Comparisons In this chapter, we'll explore real-life stories that illustrate the impact of these early social comparisons. Imagine a student who loves art but, in a school where sports are celebrated, feels the need to hide their passion to avoid standing out. Or consider a child who is bullied, carrying the impact of those painful words long after the events themselves have faded. These stories reveal the often hidden ways that school experiences contribute to a narrative of self-worth, whether positive or negative. We'll look at how friendships can both uplift and shape us. Early connections with classmates can feel like the first steps toward understanding ourselves in relation to others, while moments of rejection or betrayal can plant seeds of insecurity that are difficult to shake. Through these stories, we'll see the ways our quest for belonging has influenced our self-identity, for better or worse. Journal prompts for reflection. To help you dig deeper into these experiences and their effects on your self-perception, consider the following journal prompts. Number one, moments of comparison. Reflect on a time in school when you felt compared to others, whether academically, athletically, or socially. How did this experience shape your view of yourself? What messages did it reinforce about your worth or abilities? Number two, adjusting to fit in. Recall a situation where you felt the need to change or hide a part of yourself to fit in with a group. What aspects of yourself did you suppress? How did this affect your sense of authenticity? Number three, the impact of friendship and rejection. Think about a meaningful friendship or alternatively, a painful experience of rejection or bullying. How did this experience contribute to your beliefs about yourself and your value in social settings? Number four, carrying school narratives into adulthood are there beliefs or patterns from your school years that you still carry with you today? How do they impact your self-esteem or relationships? Number five, rewriting your narrative. Consider one of these early experiences and ask yourself if it's still relevant today. If you could rewrite the story from a more compassionate perspective, what would it say? By exploring these reflections, you'll begin to recognize where your sense of worth may still be influenced by the need for social acceptance. Remember, these experiences from school were a part of growing up, but they don't have to define who you are today. As you let go of outdated narratives, you can embrace a self-image rooted in acceptance rather than comparison, and belonging that stems from authenticity rather than conformity. This chapter is a step toward releasing the need for external validation and reclaiming your worth on your own terms. Chapter 4. Society and Culture – Unspoken Expectations our sense of self doesn't develop in isolation. Beyond family and school, society at large has a profound influence on how we perceive ourselves. Cultural ideals, media portrayals, and societal expectations create a framework of shoulds that often feel as inescapable as gravity. They whisper to us about what it means to be successful, attractive, strong, and worthy. 
These messages, though unspoken, exert powerful pressure to fit a certain mold, a mold that can be difficult, if not impossible, to truly embody. From a young age, we're surrounded by cultural standards that subtly shape our beliefs about ourselves and the world. Media bombards us with images of perfection, the ideal body, the perfect relationship, the successful career. These portrayals rarely represent the full spectrum of human experience, leaving us with a narrow vision of what it means to be enough. When we inevitably fall short of these ideals, we often turn inward, wondering if we're somehow inadequate. Consider beauty standards, for instance. Each era has its definition of physical attractiveness, and these ideals are perpetuated through magazines, social media, and advertising. They create expectations for how we should look, subtly implying that those who fit the mold are somehow more valuable. Similarly, society often defines success in terms of wealth, status, and achievement, framing those who don't reach these benchmarks as somehow less capable or worthy. Gender roles add another layer, dictating how men and women should think, behave, and contribute. Men may feel pressure to embody strength and stoicism, while women are often expected to balance beauty with caregiving. These ideals impact our self-worth by creating invisible standards we're expected to reach. They suggest that there is a right way to be in the world and that anything outside of these norms is somehow lesser. When we measure ourselves against these unrealistic expectations, it can fuel self-criticism, dissatisfaction, and a feeling of never quite being enough. These societal standards, though silent, play a significant role in reinforcing self-judgment. Challenging cultural narratives. This chapter is an invitation to look critically at the cultural beliefs and social norms you may have internalized. Ask yourself, what ideals have I absorbed from society and how do they impact my self-worth? Do I equate success with a particular lifestyle? Do I associate beauty with specific physical traits? By identifying these influences, you can begin to unravel the unspoken expectations that have shaped your self-perception. Consider that cultural ideals are constructs, not truths. They are shaped by society, and they evolve over time. The beauty ideal from 50 years ago is not the same as it is today. What's more, these standards often fail to account for the incredible diversity of human experience. Real beauty, success, and strength exist in countless forms, many of which go uncelebrated by mainstream culture. Exercises for questioning cultural beliefs. Number one, identify cultural standards you feel pressure to meet. Write down any societal standards that influence your self-worth. These could relate to appearance, success, intelligence, or gender roles. Ask yourself where these beliefs originated. Are they rooted in media, cultural traditions, or social norms? Number two, challenge the validity of these standards. For each standard, ask yourself if it's truly meaningful to you. Why should beauty be defined by specific physical traits or success by financial wealth? Consider if these ideals align with your values or if they feel limiting. Number three, redefine your own standards. Choose one cultural belief you'd like to redefine. If society equates success with financial status, redefine success in terms of personal fulfillment, relationships, or creativity. Write a statement that reflects this new definition and post it somewhere visible as a reminder. Number four, create a positive affirmation for self-worth. Write an affirmation that reinforces your intrinsic worth independent of society's standards. For example, I am valuable just as I am, without needing to meet anyone else's definition of success, beauty, or strength. Repeat this affirmation when you feel societal pressure to conform. Number five, practice media mindfulness. For a week, pay attention to the messages you consume through media. Notice any patterns or ideals presented and how they make you feel about yourself. Limit exposure to sources that trigger self-doubt and seek out media that celebrates diversity, authenticity, and positivity. By questioning and redefining societal ideals, you open the door to a more authentic self-perception. You begin to see that worth isn't something to be earned by fitting into society's narrow boxes, but something that exists inherently within you. As you challenge these inherited beliefs, you'll find freedom in creating a self-image that is rooted not in external validation, but in your own truth, values, and experiences. This process of unlearning societal conditioning allows you to cultivate a sense of self that is genuine, resilient, and unapologetically you. Chapter 5. The Mask We Wear Confronting the Illusion of Perfection In a world that often values perfection, 
Many of us feel compelled to hide our imperfections, donning a mask that we believe will make us more acceptable, likable, or even admired. This mask is made up of carefully curated pieces of ourselves, parts that we think others want to see, while the rest, our insecurities, struggles, and quirks, remains concealed. This habit of masking can begin as a way to fit in, but over time, it can lead us further from our true selves, creating a disconnect that impacts our mental well-being. The pressure to appear flawless is amplified by social media, where we see highly edited glimpses of other people's lives and often feel the need to present our own idealized versions. We share the highlights, the successes, the polished moments, while our challenges and raw emotions remain hidden. This creates an illusion that everyone else has it together, leading us to believe that we must do the same. But behind this mask lies a more complex reality, one where perfection is an illusion that denies the beautiful imperfections that make us human. Imagine wearing an actual mask, something that covers your face completely. At first, it may feel like a shield, a way to present only the acceptable parts of yourself. But over time, the mask becomes heavy, uncomfortable, and restrictive. It limits what you can see, hear, and express. Hiding behind this mask may offer a temporary sense of security, but it ultimately distances us from authentic connection, both with others and with ourselves. The mental toll of maintaining this mask can be exhausting, leading to feelings of isolation, anxiety, and a persistent fear of being found out. This chapter invites you to gently confront the illusion of perfection by taking small steps to remove the mask and reveal your true self. Letting go of perfection doesn't mean letting go of growth or self-improvement. It means embracing yourself as you are, understanding that authenticity and vulnerability are strengths, not weaknesses. When we begin to show up without the mask, we invite real connection and acceptance from those around us, and most importantly, from ourselves. Exercises for unmasking your true self. Number one, identify your mask. Take a few minutes to reflect on how you present yourself in different settings. Write down any traits, habits, or mannerisms you emphasize to feel more acceptable or perfect in social situations. How do you act differently online versus in person or around strangers versus close friends? This reflection helps you see where and why the mask may come up. Number two, examine the toll of perfectionism. Think about times when the need to be perfect has caused stress, anxiety, or self-doubt. Write down any recent examples. How did striving for perfection impact your mental well-being, relationships, or personal goals? Recognizing this toll can provide motivation to release the need for constant perfection. Number three, take small steps toward authenticity. Choose one setting where you feel safe, like with a trusted friend or family member. Share a part of yourself that you'd normally keep hidden perhaps a fear, a struggle, or an insecurity. Notice how it feels to express this part of yourself openly and without judgment. This small step toward authenticity can help you become more comfortable with being real in other areas of life. Number four, set imperfection goals. Instead of setting goals to achieve perfection, set imperfection goals that encourage vulnerability. For example, allow yourself to make a minor mistake at work, leave a project unfinished for the night, or share an unedited photo on social media. Reflect on how it feels to let go of the need to appear perfect in these small ways. Number five, daily affirmation of authenticity. Create a daily affirmation that reinforces your commitment to authenticity, such as, I am enough as I am, imperfections and all, or my worth is not defined by others' opinions. Repeat this affirmation each day to remind yourself that true acceptance starts with accepting yourself. As you work through these exercises, remember that revealing your authentic self is not about discarding ambition or ignoring personal growth. It's about building a foundation of self-acceptance that allows you to grow in alignment with who you truly are, rather than a perfected version you feel pressured to portray. The more you practice unveiling parts of yourself, the lighter you'll feel, unburdened by the weight of perfection. And with each small step, you'll discover a deeper connection to yourself and those around you, a connection based on the beauty of your genuine, unmasked self. Chapter 6, The Inner Critic, Transforming Self-Talk. Deep within our minds exists a voice that often feels like a relentless critic, pointing out our perceived flaws and mistakes, reminding us of where we fall short. This inner critic can be harsh, critical, and at times, deeply unkind. It's a voice many of us have grown so accustomed to that we barely notice it anymore. Yet it subtly influences our thoughts, feelings, and actions 
creating barriers to self-acceptance. But where does this inner critic come from, and why does it wield so much power over us? For many, the inner critic originates in early conditioning. As children, we're naturally impressionable, absorbing messages about right and wrong, success and failure, worthiness and unworthiness. This voice often starts as an attempt to protect us, reminding us to follow rules, meet expectations, and avoid punishment or rejection. Perhaps it echoed phrases we heard from adults or authority figures, or it may have arisen as a way to navigate peer pressure and social expectations. In childhood, this self-monitoring may have served as a protective mechanism, helping us avoid criticism and maintain a sense of belonging. However, as we grow into adulthood, this inner critic's tone often becomes counterproductive, inhibiting rather than protecting us. Instead of offering guidance, it keeps us stuck, fueling doubt and insecurity. It convinces us that we're not enough, reinforcing patterns of self-judgment that no longer serve our well-being. This self-criticism can keep us from taking risks, pursuing our passions, or embracing our authentic selves, as we constantly fear making mistakes or falling short. The good news is that while we may not be able to silence this inner critic entirely, we can transform it. By reshaping our self-talk, we can shift from a place of harsh judgment to one of understanding and compassion. Self-compassion is not about ignoring our flaws or pretending to be perfect. Rather, it's about treating ourselves with the same kindness we'd offer a friend. This chapter will guide you through techniques to identify, confront, and transform your inner critic into a supportive inner voice that encourages rather than diminishes. Techniques for transforming self-talk. Number one, identify the critic's voice. Start by noticing when your inner critic speaks up. Often, it appears in moments of self-doubt, failure, or vulnerability. Pay attention to the phrases it uses. Are there specific words or themes that arise? Write them down to gain clarity on its patterns. Recognizing this voice as separate from your true self is a powerful first step. Number two, recognize the critic's origins. Ask yourself where these critical messages might have come from. Do they echo words or attitudes from your past? Reflect on whether this voice was helpful in childhood, protecting you in some way. By acknowledging its origins, you can see it as a relic of the past rather than a reflection of who you are today. Number three, challenge the critic's assumptions. Once you've identified the critical thoughts, question their validity. Ask yourself, is this thought based on fact or is it an assumption? If your inner critic says, I'm not good enough, challenge this with evidence of times when you've succeeded, grown, or shown resilience. Often, the critic is based on outdated beliefs that don't align with your present self. Number four, replace criticism with compassion. Transform the critic by practicing self-compassion. Imagine speaking to yourself as you would a close friend facing similar struggles. Instead of saying, I always mess up, try, I'm learning, and it's okay to make mistakes. Self-compassion allows you to accept imperfections without harsh judgment, fostering a supportive inner dialogue. Number five, Create a positive affirmation. Develop an affirmation that counters the inner critic's most frequent criticisms. For example, if your critic often tells you, you're not capable, your affirmation might be, I am capable and I trust myself to handle challenges. Repeat this affirmation daily, allowing it to become a positive, grounding mantra that encourages self-belief. Number six, practice gratitude for your efforts. Self-compassion also involves appreciating your own efforts and progress. Each day, reflect on one thing you did well, no matter how small. By focusing on your strengths and accomplishments, you can gradually shift your attention away from criticism and toward gratitude for your growth. Number seven, visualize your inner critic as a character. This technique involves creating a character for your inner critic, a persona with its own quirks and predictable dialogue. Visualizing it as a separate entity helps you detach from its influence and respond with humor or compassion. You might even imagine having a conversation with this character, thanking it for its concern but letting it know you're in charge. Number eight, engage in self-compassionate journaling. Set aside a few minutes each day to journal about how you felt during moments of self-criticism. As you write, approach yourself with empathy, acknowledging any difficult emotions. Use this time to encourage yourself, affirming that growth is a journey and imperfections are a natural part of being human. These techniques are not about silencing the inner critic, but about transforming it into a balanced, supportive voice that encourages self-growth. 
With time and practice, you can retrain your mind to respond to mistakes and challenges with compassion rather than criticism, building a more resilient self-image. This process invites you to let go of the belief that you need to be perfect to be worthy and instead to see yourself as a whole person, worthy of kindness, understanding, and acceptance. In transforming your self-talk, you'll discover a powerful ally within, a voice that encourages, celebrates, and believes in you. The journey of self-acceptance is far more fulfilling when guided by compassion rather than criticism. With each small shift in how you speak to yourself, you create space for greater self-respect, courage, and joy. Chapter 7. Redefining Strength, Embracing Imperfections as Power True self-acceptance begins with a radical shift in how we see ourselves, including our so-called weaknesses. In a world that often prizes perfection and dismisses vulnerability as a flaw, it's easy to feel that our imperfections make us less capable or worthy. But what if we could see our perceived flaws as sources of strength and authenticity? What if the very traits we've been told to hide or fix are, in fact, the keys to our resilience, creativity, and uniqueness? Throughout history, countless influential figures have redefined strength by embracing their imperfections, showing us that flaws do not diminish greatness, they enhance it. Consider Abraham Lincoln, who suffered from bouts of deep melancholy, yet this sensitivity fueled his empathy and compassion, which shaped his leadership. Or think of Frida Kahlo, whose physical suffering due to illness and injury became a driving force behind her powerful, unfiltered art. These individuals demonstrate that what society often labels as weaknesses can be the source of our most profound strength, giving us depth, wisdom, and resilience. The challenge, then, is to reframe our own perceived flaws not as limitations, but as qualities that make us whole. In embracing these aspects of ourselves, we can cultivate a sense of freedom and authenticity, allowing us to live fully and without apology. Exercises for embracing imperfections as power. 1. Identify your perceived weaknesses. Make a list of traits, habits, or tendencies you view as weaknesses. These could be things you were criticized for as a child or aspects of yourself that you've tried to hide or fix. Reflect on each one without judgment, simply acknowledging them as parts of your unique self. 2. Reframe your weaknesses as strengths. Next to each perceived weakness, write down how this trait could contribute to your resilience, creativity, or authenticity. For example, if you see yourself as too sensitive, consider how this sensitivity allows you to connect deeply with others, empathize, and create meaningful relationships. Recognizing the strengths within your imperfections can shift your perspective on what it means to be whole. 3. Draw inspiration from others. Think of an influential figure, past or present, who has publicly embraced an imperfection or turned a perceived weakness into a source of strength. Reflect on what you admire about this person and how their journey might inspire you to see your own flaws differently. 4. Create an imperfection celebration list. Take time each day or week to write down moments when your imperfections contributed positively to your life or others. For instance, if you've been told you're too quiet, reflect on a moment where your quiet presence made someone feel heard or respected. This practice reinforces that your unique qualities add value to your life. Journal prompts for embracing imperfections. Number one, reflect on a time when a flaw helped you overcome a challenge. Think back to a situation where something you perceived as a weakness actually helped you in a meaningful way. Describe the experience and explore how this quality contributed to your growth. Number two, identify qualities you hide from others. Are there aspects of yourself you keep hidden fearing judgment or rejection. Write about why you hide these qualities and consider how they might add to your authenticity if openly embraced. Number three, imagine a life without perfectionism. Journal about how your life would feel if you fully accepted your imperfections. What would change in your relationships, your goals, or your self-perception? How might this acceptance bring you closer to a sense of freedom and peace? Number four, write a letter to your imperfect self. Compose a letter to yourself that celebrates all the qualities you once tried to suppress or fix. Acknowledge each one as part of what makes you unique, resilient, and whole. Thank yourself for the journey you've traveled and the person you've become, imperfections and all. By embracing our imperfections, we liberate ourselves from the need to conform to an impossible standard of perfection. We gain the freedom to live in alignment with our true selves, confident that our worth is not diminished by flaws. In fact, it's enhanced by them. 
Embracing imperfections as strengths is a powerful act of self-acceptance, a declaration that we are enough as we are. As you move forward, keep this in mind. True strength is not about being flawless, it's about being whole. By embracing every part of yourself, you not only deepen your own self-acceptance, but inspire others to do the same. The freedom found in self-acceptance is profound and transformative, allowing you to show up fully, authentically, and without apology. Chapter 8. Embracing Vulnerability – The Courage to be Seen For many of us, vulnerability feels like something to avoid, an exposure of our weaknesses, fears, or imperfections that might make us seem fragile or less than. We're often taught that being strong means staying guarded, maintaining control, and hiding the parts of ourselves that feel raw or uncertain. Yet, vulnerability is one of the most courageous acts we can undertake. It's the willingness to let others see us as we truly are, unfiltered and authentic, and it's a vital ingredient for genuine connection and self-acceptance. Think back to childhood moments when vulnerability was instinctive, like the courage to ask for help, express a need, or admit a mistake. These moments taught us that being open allows others to understand us more deeply. But as we grow older, experiences of rejection, judgment, or shame may teach us to guard our hearts. We become reluctant to reveal our true feelings or insecurities, even with the people closest to us. In adult relationships, whether friendships, family bonds, or romantic connections, vulnerability becomes the bridge that leads to trust and intimacy. It's through sharing our joys, fears, struggles, and dreams that we allow others to know us fully, and we create a foundation for meaningful relationships. This chapter is an invitation to view vulnerability not as a weakness, but as an act of bravery. It takes immense courage to be seen, to show up as you are, and to embrace the possibility of connection over the need for protection. By practicing vulnerability, we give ourselves permission to be human, to make mistakes, and to grow through honest connection with others. When we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, we often find that we're met with understanding, empathy, and sometimes the profound relief of realizing we're not alone. Practical Exercises for Practicing Vulnerability Number 1. Start small. Practice with safe people. Begin by sharing a small vulnerability with someone you trust deeply, a close friend, family member, or partner. It could be as simple as admitting a recent mistake or sharing a personal goal you feel hesitant about. Notice how it feels to open up and how the other person responds. Starting small allows you to build confidence in safe environments before practicing vulnerability more broadly. Number two, express a need. One way to practice vulnerability is by openly expressing a need. This could be asking for help, seeking advice, or simply stating that you're struggling with something. Often, we shy away from expressing needs to avoid burdening others, but doing so allows people to offer support and reminds us that needing help is human. Number three, reflect on past vulnerable moments. Take some time to recall moments when you felt vulnerable, whether they were positive or challenging experiences. What did you share? And how did it feel afterward? Did the experience strengthen your relationships? Reflecting on these moments can remind you of the benefits of vulnerability and reinforce that it's an act of courage. Number four, journal about what you fear revealing. Write down something about yourself that you fear sharing with others. This could be an insecurity, a dream, or a recent mistake. Explore why you're hesitant to share it and how you think it might be received. This exercise helps you understand the roots of your vulnerability and gradually ease into the idea of being open. Number five, practice self-compassion when vulnerable. Whenever you choose to be vulnerable, be kind to yourself in the process. Remind yourself that vulnerability is not about seeking validation, but about being real and courageous. If you feel discomfort, acknowledge it, and remember that vulnerability is a learning process. Practicing self-compassion will make it easier to continue opening up over time. Reframing vulnerability as courage. One way to shift your perspective on vulnerability is to view it as a courageous act. Vulnerability is the courage to show up and be seen, even when there are no guarantees. When you take off the armor of perfection and self-protection, you create space for genuine connection. People are often drawn to authenticity. By allowing yourself to be vulnerable, you may inspire others to do the same, creating a ripple effect of openness and understanding. Consider this. In every meaningful relationship or memorable encounter, there is likely an element of vulnerability. It's what makes us feel understood, accepted, and valued. By embracing vulnerability, you're not only strengthening your connections with others, 
but also building a foundation of self-acceptance. You're choosing to honor your true self over an idealized version, finding strength in the act of simply being real. As you continue to practice vulnerability, remind yourself that it's a skill, not a one-time act. Each time you allow yourself to be open, you build confidence and resilience. Vulnerability becomes a reminder that strength isn't about being invulnerable. It's about showing up fully, without apology. In embracing vulnerability, you give yourself and those around you the gift of real connection, honesty, and trust. And in that process, you may discover that the courage to be seen is one of the most powerful acts of self-acceptance. Chapter 9, Daily Self-Compassion The Practice of Being Kind to Yourself Self-compassion is an often overlooked but essential ingredient in the journey towards self-acceptance. It's about being as kind to ourselves as we are to those we care about, offering understanding instead of judgment, patience instead of frustration, and gentleness instead of harshness. For many of us, though, kindness toward ourselves doesn't come naturally. We're quick to forgive others but slow to forgive ourselves, holding on to mistakes, insecurities, and perceived failures with a fierce grip. Self-compassion invites us to loosen that grip, to soften our self-judgments, and to replace self-criticism with self-kindness. Introducing self-compassion as a daily practice may seem unfamiliar at first, especially if you're accustomed to being hard on yourself. But self-compassion is not about ignoring your flaws or avoiding growth. Rather, it's a way of embracing yourself fully, recognizing that you're human, and that imperfection is part of the human experience. Think of it as building a foundation of support within yourself, a resource you can rely on, especially in moments when you feel discouraged or vulnerable. In this chapter, we'll explore practical ways to incorporate self-compassion into your daily life. These practices are meant to be simple, sustainable, and grounding, gradually replacing self-criticism with kindness. As you adopt these rituals, you'll begin to experience the profound shifts that come from treating yourself as you would a close friend, with patience, understanding, and respect. Practical tools for daily self-compassion. Number one, self-compassionate journaling. Begin or end each day by writing in a self-compassion journal. Use this time to reflect on moments when you were hard on yourself and reframe those thoughts in a more forgiving, understanding light. For instance, if you berated yourself for a mistake at work, write out a more compassionate response such as, I did my best with the information I had, and I am learning. This practice helps you build a habit of speaking kindly to yourself. Number two, create daily affirmations of kindness. Choose or create affirmations that resonate with your journey toward self-compassion. These could be as simple as, I am enough as I am, or I am deserving of kindness and patience. Repeat these affirmations throughout the day, especially when self-critical thoughts arise. Over time, they will serve as gentle reminders that support your self-worth. Number three, practice the three-stage self-compassion pause. In challenging moments, pause and guide yourself through these three steps. Acknowledge the feeling, identify and accept your current emotion, whether it's frustration, sadness, or disappointment. Recognize shared humanity. Remind yourself that everyone experiences struggles and setbacks. You're not alone in feeling this way. Offer yourself kindness, place a hand over your heart, take a deep breath, and say something compassionate to yourself like, I'm here for you. It's okay to feel this way. This exercise brings immediate comfort and grounds you in a nurturing attitude. Number four, turn self-criticism into self-kindness with the friend test. When self-criticism arises, Ask yourself if you would say the same words to a friend. If the answer is no, rephrase your thoughts as if you were comforting a friend going through a similar situation. This practice not only lessens the intensity of self-criticism, but also trains your mind to respond to challenges with empathy. Number five, cultivate moments of gratitude for yourself. Each day, think of one thing you appreciate about yourself. This could be a small act of kindness, a quality you admire, or a moment when you showed resilience. Write it down or simply say it aloud. Practicing gratitude toward yourself nurtures a more positive self-image and builds confidence in your own worth. Personal anecdotes and reflections. Self-compassion often feels like a breakthrough after years of self-criticism. Perhaps you've had a moment when you expected harshness, but instead offered yourself a soft response. For instance, many people feel self-critical after making a mistake at work or in a relationship. But imagine how different it feels when, in that moment, you choose to say, I'm learning. 
This doesn't define me, rather than replaying the mistake over and over in your mind. There are countless stories of people who have discovered the power of self-compassion as a transformative practice. For example, a person who once felt immobilized by perfectionism may learn to replace that pressure with self-kindness, finding the freedom to make mistakes and grow without judgment. Another individual, recovering from self-doubt, might learn that self-compassion opens the door to confidence, resilience, and acceptance. These shifts don't happen overnight, but with consistent practice, they lead to profound inner peace and a renewed sense of self-worth. Reflective exercises to deepen self-compassion. Number one, identify your patterns of self-criticism. Reflect on situations where you tend to be most self-critical. What are the recurring themes and how do they affect you? Understanding these patterns helps you prepare compassionate responses for the future. Number two, write a letter of compassion to yourself. Imagine you're writing a letter to yourself, addressing a recent struggle or mistake. Approach this letter with kindness, empathy, and encouragement, as if you were writing to a dear friend. Read this letter whenever you feel the pull of self-criticism. Number three, visualize your future self thanking you for compassion. Close your eyes and imagine your future self grateful for the compassion you're cultivating today. Visualize this future version of you as calm, accepting, and at peace, thanking you for choosing kindness over criticism. This visualization reinforces the value of self-compassion as an investment in long-term well-being. Number four, set a daily reminder to practice self-compassion. Choose a small daily ritual, like a gentle hand over your heart, a deep breath, or a short affirmation that reminds you to practice self-kindness throughout the day. Use this ritual to ground yourself whenever you feel anxious, insecure, or self-critical. Through these practices, self-compassion becomes more than a concept. It becomes an inner habit, an ongoing commitment to treat yourself with the respect and understanding you deserve. Each day that you choose kindness over criticism, you reinforce a foundation of self-acceptance. You remind yourself that you are worthy, not because you're flawless, but because you're human. Embracing self-compassion as a daily ritual allows you to experience a freedom and peace that only self-acceptance can bring, inviting you to live each day from a place of gentle strength and self-respect. Chapter 10, Living with Boundaries, Respecting Your Own Needs. For many of us, the idea of setting boundaries feels challenging. We worry that by saying no or asserting our needs, we'll disappoint others or be perceived as selfish. This discomfort often stems from childhood conditioning, where we learn to please others to gain approval and acceptance. But as we mature, it becomes clear that honoring our own needs is essential to self-worth and self-acceptance. Boundaries are not barriers, they're expressions of self-respect and ultimately, they lead to healthier, more authentic relationships. Setting boundaries is an act of claiming space for yourself, a way of saying, I am worthy of respect and my needs matter. Boundaries remind us and those around us that we are not defined by others' expectations. They give us permission to protect our energy, values, and well-being. At its core, boundary setting is about understanding where you end and others begin, creating a healthy separation that supports personal growth and self-respect. This chapter will guide you through the process of defining, communicating, and maintaining boundaries, particularly in relationships. Setting boundaries might feel uncomfortable initially, but over time, you'll notice how they create space for self-respect, clarity, and genuine connection. Embracing boundaries allows you to relate to others authentically, building relationships based on mutual respect rather than unspoken expectations or emotional strain. Practical exercises for defining and setting boundaries. Number one, identify your boundary needs. Reflect on areas in your life where you feel drained, overwhelmed, or resentful. These feelings are often signs that a boundary may be needed. Make a list of situations, relationships, or activities that impact your well-being and identify how a boundary could protect your energy in each one. Number two, define your boundaries with clarity. Once you've identified where boundaries are needed, get specific. For example, if you often feel overextended with work, a boundary might be, I won't check emails after 6 p.m. If social events leave you drained, set a limit on how often you attend. Clear boundaries help you stick to your intentions and make communication easier. Number three, practice assertive communication. Communicating boundaries can feel intimidating, especially if you're not used to expressing your needs. Practice using I statements that focus on your feelings and needs 
rather than on others' actions. For instance, say, I need time for myself after work, instead of, you're always expecting me to be available. Practicing this approach can make conversations smoother and help you assert your needs respectfully. Number four, visualize success scenarios. Before setting a boundary, visualize a positive outcome. Imagine yourself confidently expressing your needs and being met with respect and understanding. Visualization can help reduce anxiety, build confidence, and remind you that boundary setting is an act of self-respect. Number five, stay consistent and patient. Maintaining boundaries can be challenging, especially with people who are accustomed to you always being available. It's natural to face resistance or guilt, but consistency is key. If you waver on your boundaries, gently remind yourself of why they matter and reinforce them calmly and confidently. Reflections on boundaries as self-respect. Boundaries can feel uncomfortable at first, particularly if you've spent years conditioned to prioritize others over yourself. But boundaries are an act of self-respect, a recognition that your time, energy, and emotional well-being are valuable. They allow you to live with integrity, honoring your values and commitments to yourself just as much as those you make to others. Healthy boundaries also bring freedom and balance into relationships. Without them, we risk overextending ourselves, feeling resentful, or losing a sense of our own identity. By setting and maintaining boundaries, you communicate to those around you that you respect yourself, and you invite them to respect you in turn. While some relationships may shift in response, boundaries ultimately strengthen those connections that are based on genuine care and understanding. Journal prompts for exploring and reinforcing boundaries. Number one, reflect on your relationship with boundaries. What is your history with boundaries? Do you feel guilty or anxious when setting them? How has your experience with boundaries impacted your self-worth? Number two, list boundaries that would support your well-being. Identify three boundaries that would create a healthier balance in your life. Think about boundaries related to time, energy, or emotional needs and write down why each one is important to you. Number three, describe a boundary success story. Recall a time when you set a boundary and it had a positive impact. How did you feel after asserting your needs? What did this experience teach you about the value of boundaries? Number four, visualize your ideal boundaries. Imagine what your life would look like if you had firm, healthy boundaries in place across all areas of your life. How would this affect your self-esteem, relationships, and energy levels? Number five, create a boundary affirmation. Write a statement that affirms your commitment to boundaries, such as, I am worthy of respect and my needs are important. Use this affirmation as a reminder when you feel challenged or hesitant to set boundaries. Embracing boundaries as a path to authenticity. Living with boundaries is an ongoing journey of learning to honor your needs without apology. By embracing boundaries, you empower yourself to live in alignment with your true self, free from the need to sacrifice your well-being for others' approval. Boundaries may not always be easy to set, but their impact is transformative. They create space for self-respect, strengthen your sense of self, and open the door to deeper, more meaningful connections. Remember that boundaries are not acts of rejection. They are acts of self-acceptance. They communicate that you value yourself enough to protect your needs, fostering a life rooted in authenticity and balance. As you continue this practice, you'll find that boundaries are not only a gift to yourself but also to those around you, as they create the foundation for healthier, more honest, and fulfilling relationships. Chapter 11. Gratitude for the Self, Cultivating Appreciation for Who You Are We often hear about the importance of practicing gratitude, focusing on life's blessings, cherished relationships, and moments of joy. But one form of gratitude we seldom consider is self-gratitude. Appreciating who we are, acknowledging our own unique journey, and valuing our personal qualities, achievements, and growth. Self-gratitude is a powerful practice that reinforces self-acceptance, builds inner peace, and nurtures a deeper, more compassionate relationship with ourselves. When we start practicing gratitude for ourselves, we move away from seeking validation externally. Instead, we recognize and affirm our own worth from within. Self-gratitude invites us to celebrate the qualities that make us who we are, honor the resilience that has carried us through difficult times, and appreciate the steps we've taken toward growth. This practice isn't about self-indulgence or ignoring our flaws. Rather, it's about acknowledging our humanity, our strengths, and our worthiness to be loved by ourselves first and foremost. 
Imagine how different your self-perception could be if you regularly paused to appreciate your journey, your efforts, and your unique traits. Gratitude for the self fosters a foundation of acceptance and kindness, allowing us to embrace every part of who we are. It helps quiet the inner critic, reminding us that we're not just a work in progress, but also a masterpiece in the making. Exercises for cultivating self-gratitude. Number one, write a self-gratitude letter. Begin by writing a letter to yourself, expressing gratitude for your journey, your qualities, and your growth. Mention specific traits you admire, accomplishments you're proud of, and challenges you've overcome. Let this letter be a place to honor everything you appreciate about yourself, from the smallest victories to the biggest life lessons. Number two, create a strengths and wins journal. Dedicate a journal to recording daily or weekly reflections on your strengths, qualities, and personal wins. This could include anything from finishing a project to showing kindness to someone or handling a difficult situation with patience. Over time, this journal becomes a collection of moments that affirm your worth, helping you cultivate a sense of self-respect and gratitude. Number three, celebrate your unique qualities with affirmations. Choose three to five qualities or traits that you admire in yourself and create personalized affirmations around them. For example, I am resilient and face challenges with courage, or I am compassionate and offer understanding to myself and others. Repeat these affirmations daily as a way to appreciate the qualities that make you uniquely you. Number four, reflect on past challenges and growth. Take a moment to reflect on a few challenging experiences you've faced and how you grew through them. Write about the resilience, wisdom, or strength you gained and express gratitude for your own courage and perseverance. Recognizing the lessons you've learned fosters a sense of appreciation for the journey that has shaped who you are today. Number five, create a self-gratitude jar. Find a small jar or container, and each day, write down one thing you're grateful for about yourself on a small slip of paper. Place it in the jar. Over time, this jar will fill with reminders of your strengths, qualities, and achievements. Whenever you need encouragement, Pick a few notes to remind yourself of all you have to be proud of. The power of self-gratitude in cultivating self-acceptance. Practicing gratitude for oneself is an act of self-love, a way to affirm that you are enough just as you are. By regularly focusing on what makes you unique and valuable, you cultivate a sense of inner peace that strengthens your self-acceptance. Self-gratitude helps counterbalance the effects of self-criticism and perfectionism, encouraging you to approach yourself with the same appreciation you extend to others. Self-gratitude also fosters resilience. When you appreciate your journey, including the setbacks and challenges, you begin to view your life through a lens of growth rather than judgment. This shift helps you move beyond comparing yourself to others, instead celebrating your own path and progress. By honoring where you are and what you've achieved, you build a foundation of acceptance and respect that empowers you to move forward with confidence and grace. Reflections on the journey of self-gratitude. Number one, reflect on qualities you appreciate. List five qualities about yourself that you genuinely appreciate. Consider how these traits contribute to your relationships, work, and personal fulfillment. How do these qualities make you feel proud of who you are? Number two, celebrate personal achievements. Write down three achievements or milestones that hold significance to you. Why are they meaningful, and how do they reflect your growth? Allow yourself to celebrate these moments without downplaying them or attributing them to luck. Number three, reframe self-criticism with self-gratitude. Think of a quality or trait that you sometimes criticize in yourself. Challenge yourself to reframe this aspect by finding something positive about it. For example, if you're self-critical about being sensitive, Consider how this trait allows you to empathize deeply with others. Number four, explore the connection between self-gratitude and inner peace. Reflect on how practicing gratitude for yourself impacts your sense of peace. Do you feel more relaxed, grounded, or at ease? Notice any shifts in your mindset when you focus on what you appreciate about yourself. By cultivating gratitude for yourself, you affirm that you are worthy, not because of what you achieve, but because of who you are. This practice reinforces that you have inherent value, deserving of love, respect, and kindness. Self-gratitude is a reminder that the journey of self-acceptance is not only about growing, but also about acknowledging and honoring the person you already are. As you continue this practice, let self-gratitude be a gentle companion on your journey, encouraging you to embrace each part of yourself with openness and appreciation.
Over time, you'll find that the more gratitude you cultivate for yourself, the stronger your foundation of self-acceptance becomes, empowering you to live with a sense of inner peace, authenticity, and fulfillment. Chapter 12, Building Relationships from a Place of Wholeness. Self-acceptance doesn't exist in isolation. It has a profound impact on our relationships. When we approach friendships, family connections, and romantic partnerships from a place of wholeness, we bring authenticity, confidence, and self-respect to the table. We're no longer seeking validation or trying to earn love. Instead, we connect with others from a place of mutual respect, openness, and genuine support, which creates deeper, more fulfilling bonds. Approaching relationships from a place of wholeness allows us to be true to ourselves and encourages others to do the same. We communicate more honestly, set healthy boundaries, and offer understanding and support without losing sight of our own needs. This balance nurtures a foundation of respect, compassion, and trust, which is essential for authentic connections. Rather than fearing vulnerability or rejection, we come to see relationships as a space where we can fully express who we are, knowing that we are worthy of love as our authentic selves. This chapter explores how self-acceptance shapes the way we relate to others and provides practical techniques to foster open communication, respect, and genuine support. By embracing these practices, we can build relationships that honor both our individuality and our shared connections, allowing us to live and love from a place of true wholeness. Techniques for building relationships from a place of wholeness. Number one, practice honest communication. Honesty is a cornerstone of relationships built on self-acceptance. When you're true to yourself, it becomes easier to communicate openly with others. Practice expressing your thoughts, needs, and feelings clearly, without fear of judgment. This honesty fosters trust and deepens the bond, encouraging others to share their true selves with you as well. Number two, set boundaries that honor your needs. Boundaries are essential in maintaining balance and respect in relationships. Communicate your boundaries clearly and calmly, and remember that setting boundaries is an act of self-care, not selfishness. For example, if you need time alone to recharge, share this need openly with friends or partners. Setting boundaries helps others understand your values and creates space for authentic connection without compromising your well-being. Number three, embrace vulnerability. Allow yourself to be vulnerable in your relationships. Vulnerability doesn't mean exposing every part of yourself, but rather sharing openly when it feels right. Sharing your fears, insecurities, and hopes builds trust and invites others to reciprocate. Vulnerability also signals that you trust your own worthiness, even if it feels uncomfortable at times. Number four, offer support without losing yourself. While being supportive is a vital part of healthy relationships, it's important to avoid losing yourself in someone else's needs. Practice compassionate listening and offer help when it's needed, but remember that you don't have to fix or solve others' issues. Acknowledge your limits and support others from a place of balance without sacrificing your own peace. Number five, let go of people-pleasing tendencies. When we fully accept ourselves, the need to please others diminishes. Instead of seeking approval or bending over backward to make others happy, focus on being genuine. Trust that those who appreciate you for who you are will value your presence without expecting you to constantly meet their expectations. This shift allows for deeper, more authentic connections. Practical steps for navigating relationships with self-acceptance. Number one, reflect on your relationship patterns. Think about your past relationships, whether friendships or romantic connections. Are there patterns of behavior, like people pleasing or avoiding conflict, that you wanna change? Recognizing these patterns helps you understand how self-acceptance can positively impact your interactions with others. Number two, use I statements in communication. When discussing needs or boundaries, frame your words from your own perspective. For example, say, I feel overwhelmed when plans change at the last minute, rather than, you always change plans. Using I statements reduces defensiveness and promotes understanding, creating space for healthier, open conversations. Number three, evaluate the health of each relationship. Not all relationships serve your growth or well-being. Consider which relationships in your life feel supportive, and which might feel draining or one-sided. Take time to assess if any relationships need a shift in boundaries or, in some cases, a graceful ending. Choosing relationships that uplift you honors your self-worth and cultivates positivity. Number four, 
celebrate each other's authenticity. In relationships grounded in self-acceptance, there's a natural desire to see each person flourish in their unique way. Make a habit of celebrating each other's successes, growth, and individuality. This approach not only strengthens bonds, but also reinforces that each person's authenticity is valuable and cherished. Number five, check in with yourself regularly. Self-acceptance is an ongoing journey, and it's essential to regularly check in with yourself, especially in relationships. Ask yourself if your needs are being met, if you're honoring your boundaries, and if you feel respected. These reflections help ensure that your relationships remain aligned with your values and well-being. How self-acceptance strengthens relationships. When we accept ourselves fully, we allow others to accept us as well. Self-acceptance brings stability and confidence, which naturally radiates in our interactions. Relationships become less about filling a void or seeking validation and more about mutual support, growth, and joy. This shift empowers us to attract relationships that align with our values, boundaries, and authentic selves. Self-acceptance also fosters resilience. In relationships, conflicts and misunderstandings are inevitable. However, when we are secure in who we are, we can navigate these moments with patience and clarity, allowing for growth rather than discord. Authentic relationships welcome the ebb and flow of emotions, conversations, and personal growth, providing a foundation that withstands the challenges that arise. Reflections on building wholeness in relationships. Number one, reflect on the gifts of authenticity. Think about a time when you showed up authentically in a relationship. How did this affect your connection with the other person? What did it teach you about the power of being yourself? Number two, describe what wholeness means to you in relationships. Take a moment to define what it means to approach relationships from a place of wholeness. How does self-acceptance shift your interactions? And what values are most important to you in building genuine connections? Number three, celebrate relationships that uplift you. Identify one or two relationships in your life where you feel fully accepted and supported. What qualities make these relationships special? Consider how you can bring these qualities into other areas of your life. Number four, journal about a boundary you want to set or strengthen. Think of one boundary you'd like to establish or reinforce in a relationship. Write about why this boundary is important, how it supports your well-being, and the steps you'll take to communicate it. Number five, visualize your ideal relationship dynamics. Imagine yourself surrounded by relationships that reflect mutual respect, open communication, and support for each person's growth. Visualize these dynamics as a foundation for your connections, allowing this image to inspire you in building and maintaining meaningful relationships. By embracing self-acceptance in relationships, you cultivate a sense of freedom and fulfillment. Each connection becomes an opportunity to share, learn, and grow without sacrificing your own values or well-being. As you nurture relationships from a place of wholeness, you'll discover that love, trust, and authenticity are powerful forces that create connections rich in respect, depth, and joy. With each step, you're not only strengthening your bonds with others, but also reaffirming your commitment to live authentically, honoring yourself in every relationship you hold dear. Chapter 13, Embracing Your Unique Path, Moving Beyond Comparison. In our society, the impulse to compare ourselves to others is deeply ingrained. From an early age, we're conditioned to measure our worth against those around us, whether it's through grades in school, career achievements, physical appearance, or social media metrics. Yet, constant comparison is a trap that undermines our self-worth and clouds our perception of our unique journey. Comparison leads us to overlook our strengths and potential, shifting our focus outward rather than inward, where genuine growth and fulfillment are found. Imagine, for a moment, a garden filled with different types of flowers, roses, sunflowers, and wild daisies, each blossoming at its own pace, in its own way. No flower looks to another for validation or competes for space. Each one blooms in alignment with its nature. This analogy reminds us that individual growth is not a race or a competition. It's a unique journey. Just as flowers have their own rhythms and seasons, so do we. Embracing our path means appreciating our own pace, timing, and experiences rather than measuring them against anyone else's. In this chapter, we'll explore the ways that social comparison can hinder self-acceptance and discuss practices to help you reconnect with your unique path. By letting go of the need to keep up or measure up, you can focus on cultivating gratitude for your own journey 
and finding meaning in your personal growth. Moving beyond comparison is a powerful act of self-respect, one that allows you to live with authenticity and a sense of fulfillment. Recognizing the trap of social comparison. Social comparison often arises from a place of insecurity, feeding on the notion that we need to measure our worth through external markers of success. This habit can manifest in subtle ways. Scrolling through social media and feeling inadequate in comparison to others' curated lives, or feeling discouraged by a friend's achievements, even if you're proud of them. Over time, these comparisons create a mental landscape filled with doubt and dissatisfaction, obscuring the joy and beauty of your own life. However, recognizing this pattern is the first step toward change. Realizing that each person's journey is distinct can help you let go of the urge to compare. Rather than seeing others' successes as a reflection on yourself, you can begin to appreciate that your path is just as valid and meaningful, even if it looks entirely different. Each person has their own set of experiences, challenges, and timing, all of which contribute to the uniqueness of their journey. Exercises for embracing your unique journey. Number one, daily gratitude for personal growth. At the end of each day, take a moment to reflect on one aspect of your journey that you're grateful for, whether it's a small victory, a new insight, or a challenge you're learning to overcome. By shifting your focus to gratitude, you'll start to appreciate your growth rather than fixating on where you should be. Number two, celebrate small milestones. Instead of waiting for grand achievements, honor the small steps you take each day toward becoming the person you aspire to be. These small milestones, whether mastering a new skill, showing kindness to yourself, or making progress on a personal goal, are worthy of celebration. Recognizing them grounds you in your journey and builds self-confidence. Number three, create a comparison detox ritual. Commit to a comparison detox by stepping away from social media or other sources that trigger self-doubt. During this period, focus on activities that bring you joy, peace, and a sense of accomplishment. Pay attention to how this break affects your mindset and consider integrating regular detoxes into your routine. Number four, reflect on your strengths and values. Write down your top strengths, values, and qualities that define you. Reflect on how these traits make you unique and consider how they shape your path. Reminding yourself of what makes you distinct helps reduce the urge to compare and reaffirms that you have your own contributions to make to the world. Number five, Visualize your life as a unique journey. Picture your life as a winding path filled with landmarks that are meaningful to you alone. Visualize yourself walking confidently on this path, pausing to appreciate each step and the lessons it brings. This visualization can serve as a grounding exercise whenever you feel pulled into comparison, helping you refocus on your own journey. Reflections on individual growth and timing. Moving beyond comparison means recognizing that growth is not a one-size-fits-all experience. Just as each flower blooms in its own time, so do we. There is no universal timeline for success, happiness, or fulfillment, and our journeys may take unexpected turns. But each step, including the missteps and challenges, is valuable and necessary for our growth. By focusing on your own journey, you'll find peace in your personal progress. Perhaps you face setbacks that, in hindsight, became turning points, or you've achieved goals that others may not value as highly, but they hold deep significance for you. Embracing your unique timing allows you to see the purpose in each experience and to trust that you're exactly where you're meant to be. Journal prompts for grounding yourself in self-gratitude. Number one, what are some personal achievements or qualities that make you feel proud? Reflect on moments when you felt a sense of fulfillment or pride, regardless of others' opinions. How do these achievements reflect your unique path? Number two, list the lessons you've learned from challenges on your journey. Think about difficult experiences that have shaped you. What insights did you gain and how have these challenges contributed to your growth? Number three, describe a time when comparison distracted you from your own journey. How did it impact your mindset or self-worth? What steps can you take to refocus on your path? Number four, visualize a life without comparison. Imagine what it would feel like to live without the weight of comparison. How would this freedom change your choices, your mindset, or your sense of self-worth? Number five, write a letter to your future self. Describe what you hope your journey will look like in the future. What qualities, values, and milestones do you want to cultivate? This exercise can help clarify your unique goals and keep you grounded in your own path.
embracing your own path with confidence. As you let go of comparison, you'll find a renewed sense of freedom and confidence in your journey. Each person's life is a unique tapestry, woven with moments that reflect their personal growth, values, and purpose. By focusing on your path, you empower yourself to grow in ways that are meaningful to you, unclouded by societal expectations or external validation. Moving beyond comparison is not about ignoring others' successes. It's about honoring your own path. It's about accepting that your value is not measured by someone else's achievements, but by your authenticity, resilience, and growth. Each step you take on your journey is an expression of who you are, and each experience, joyful or challenging, brings you closer to your true self. Embracing this mindset allows you to live authentically, appreciating the richness of your journey and the beauty of becoming who you were always meant to be. Chapter 14, The Evolving Self, Allowing Room for Growth and Change. Self-acceptance is not a fixed destination, but an ever-evolving process that grows with us. Just as we are dynamic beings, constantly learning, adapting, and expanding, self-acceptance is meant to change alongside us. Yet, for many of us, it's easy to cling to outdated self-concepts and patterns, even when they no longer serve our growth. True self-acceptance requires not only the courage to embrace who we are now, but also the openness to allow ourselves to become who we are meant to be. Embracing change can feel uncomfortable, especially when it challenges our sense of identity. We may feel hesitant to let go of familiar labels or past versions of ourselves that we relied on for stability. However, personal evolution is a natural and essential part of self-acceptance. Just as a tree sheds its leaves to make room for new growth, we too must be willing to release old ideas about who we are and welcome the opportunities that change brings. In this chapter, we'll explore self-acceptance as a lifelong commitment that adapts to each new chapter of life. We'll look at how to let go of past self-concepts, embrace growth as a vital part of self-acceptance, and celebrate the journey of becoming. By viewing self-acceptance as fluid and adaptable, you can foster a mindset that welcomes evolution rather than resists it, allowing you to move forward with confidence and grace. Exercises for embracing growth and letting go of old self-concepts. Number one, reflect on outdated self-labels. Take a few minutes to write down any labels or identities you once associated with yourself, but that no longer align with who you are today. These might include roles, beliefs, or qualities you've outgrown. Reflect on how these labels served you in the past and why it's okay to release them now. Number two, create a letting go ritual. Symbolically release old self-concepts by writing them on slips of paper and burning them, or simply placing them in a box you intend to discard. This ritual serves as a gentle acknowledgement that growth sometimes means saying goodbye to past versions of yourself, making space for who you are becoming. Number three, visualize your evolving self. Close your eyes and imagine yourself five or 10 years from now. Visualize the qualities, habits, and mindset you'd like to embody in the future. Picture this version of yourself as vividly as possible and allow yourself to feel excited about the journey to becoming this person. Visualization reinforces your commitment to growth as an integral part of self-acceptance. Number four, journal about changes you're proud of. Reflect on the ways you've grown over the years. Write down specific examples of how you've adapted, improved, or changed in a way that feels meaningful to you. Acknowledging these changes helps you see growth as an ongoing process and reminds you that each step is a celebration of your journey. Number five, set growth intentions instead of rigid goals. Rather than setting rigid outcome-based goals, consider creating intentions that allow room for growth. For example, instead of aiming to become perfectly organized, set an intention to explore ways to bring more organization into my life. Growth intentions keep you flexible, making room for discovery, learning, and adaptation. Embracing growth as an integral part of self-acceptance. When we allow ourselves the freedom to evolve, self-acceptance becomes less about arriving and more about continuously honoring where we are on the journey. Recognizing that change is not only natural but necessary for growth enables us to release any rigid attachments to who we once were. We can embrace new perspectives, skills, and experiences with curiosity and openness. The path of self-acceptance is not linear. Some days, it may feel effortless to accept who we are, while other days, we may feel drawn back to old doubts or insecurities. By viewing self-acceptance as fluid, you give yourself permission to have moments of uncertainty 
while still honoring your growth. This approach encourages resilience, as you learn to see each change or setback as an essential part of becoming more aligned with your true self. Celebrating personal evolution also reinforces the understanding that self-acceptance doesn't mean stagnation. Growth and self-acceptance are intertwined. One cannot exist without the other. By embracing this duality, you free yourself from the pressure of being complete and instead welcome the adventure of becoming. Journal prompts for embracing an evolving self. Number one, reflect on recent changes in your life. Think about a recent change, big or small, that has had an impact on you. How did this change shape your sense of self? What did you learn about yourself through this experience? Number two, write a letter to your future self. Address a letter to your future self, acknowledging the growth you envision over the next few years. Express hope, encouragement, and excitement for the person you are becoming, allowing yourself to dream without limitation. Number three, describe qualities you're ready to release. Identify qualities or behaviors that may have served you in the past but no longer align with who you are. Consider how these qualities once supported you and write a few sentences on why it's time to let them go to make room for growth. Number four, celebrate a recent personal victory. Write about a recent achievement, big or small, that reflects personal growth. How does this victory demonstrate your evolving self? Take pride in this moment, acknowledging that growth is a sign of self-acceptance in action. Number five, visualize your path as a river. Imagine your journey as a flowing river that adapts to its surroundings, changing course as it encounters obstacles or new terrain. Visualize yourself moving along this river with ease, welcoming each twist and turn as part of your unique path. Celebrating personal evolution as self-acceptance. Growth is the natural expression of self-acceptance. When you allow yourself to grow, adapt, and change, you honor the complexity of who you are. Life's experiences continuously shape and refine us, and self-acceptance means acknowledging that you are always a work in progress. Embracing this perspective invites you to celebrate each stage of your journey, rather than clinging to a static sense of identity. Imagine each new chapter of your life as an opportunity to learn, develop, and enrich your sense of self. Rather than fearing change, welcome it as an invitation to expand. When you view self-acceptance as an evolving process, you become more resilient in the face of challenges, confident in your ability to adapt, and open to new aspects of yourself. As you continue this lifelong journey of self-acceptance, remember that growth is not about becoming someone different. It's about becoming more aligned with who you truly are. Each step forward, each change embraced, and each outdated belief released is a testament to your commitment to authenticity. In honoring your evolving self, you deepen your self-acceptance, Embracing a life filled with purpose, curiosity, and boundless potential. Chapter 15. Sharing your journey, inspiring and supporting others. Self-acceptance is a deeply personal journey, but it's also one that carries the potential to inspire and uplift those around us. When you share your experiences, challenges, and insights, you create a ripple effect that extends beyond your own life. By openly embracing your story, you offer others permission to do the same. Self-acceptance, then, becomes a gift that not only transforms your own life, but also impacts the collective, friends, family, and even strangers who may see a part of their own journey in yours. In a world where self-doubt and comparison are common, showing up as your authentic self is a powerful act. It encourages others to be genuine, vulnerable, and kind to themselves. By sharing your story, you create connections based on empathy, strength, and resilience. Your journey of self-acceptance becomes a bridge that helps others walk their own path with courage and hope. In this chapter, we'll explore how you can share your journey in ways that feel authentic and impactful. Whether through mentorship, conversations, storytelling, or acts of empathy, your openness to share your story can inspire others to embark on their own journeys toward self-acceptance. When you support others in finding their own value, you reinforce your own commitment to living authentically creating a community that thrives on acceptance, understanding, and mutual growth. Practical ways to inspire others through self-acceptance. Number one, be open and vulnerable in everyday conversations. Sharing your journey doesn't require a grand platform or audience. Start small by opening up in your day-to-day -day conversations. Expressing vulnerability, whether about a recent challenge or a personal insight, invites others to do the same. 
you'll be surprised by how much impact a single conversation can have on someone's self-perception. Number two, use storytelling as a tool for empathy and inspiration. Stories are powerful because they resonate on an emotional level. Whether it's through writing, social media, or casual talks with friends, share stories from your life that illustrate moments of growth, resilience, or self-discovery. By framing your journey as a narrative, you make it relatable, inspiring others to see their own challenges as stepping stones toward self-acceptance. Number three, offer mentorship or support to those on a similar path. If you feel called to do so, consider mentoring or supporting others who are just beginning their journey. Mentorship doesn't have to be formal. It can be as simple as offering advice, listening with empathy, or encouraging someone to embrace their own path. Sharing your experiences in a supportive, non-judgmental way can offer immense encouragement to those who are still finding their footing. Number four, be an example of self-compassion and boundaries. Living your truth, setting boundaries, and treating yourself with kindness are powerful ways to inspire others. When people witness your commitment to self-respect and self-acceptance, they may be inspired to treat themselves similarly. Your actions speak volumes, often more than words, showing that it's possible to live authentically without compromising self-worth. Number five, create a safe space for honest conversations. Whether it's in a friend group, family setting, or community gathering, strive to create environments where people feel safe to share openly. When you bring a non-judgmental, open-hearted presence to conversations, you allow others to express themselves honestly. This kind of environment fosters connection, making it easier for everyone to support each other's journeys. Reinforcing the ripple effect of self-acceptance. When you share your journey of self-acceptance, you spark a chain reaction. Your story may resonate with someone, inspiring them to begin their own journey. They, in turn, might encourage others to embrace self-worth, leading to an expanding ripple of acceptance, authenticity, and kindness. This ripple effect demonstrates that personal growth doesn't just benefit the individual, it benefits society as a whole. Your willingness to be open creates a world that values diversity of experience and individuality, allowing people to feel accepted as they are. Self-acceptance, in this way, becomes a collective journey, one that brings people together rather than isolating them. By sharing your path, you affirm that each person's journey is unique, and that's precisely what makes it powerful. Reflections on the collective impact of self-acceptance. Number one, reflect on a time when someone else's story inspired you. Think about a person who inspired you to accept yourself more fully. How did their openness affect your mindset? What did you take away from their example? Reflecting on these moments reminds you of the power of shared experiences and can help you feel more comfortable sharing your own. Number two, consider your unique strengths and lessons. Make a list of the insights and strengths you've gained on your journey. What makes your story unique? How might sharing these lessons benefit others? Acknowledging the value of your experiences reinforces your confidence in the potential impact of your story. Number three, imagine the ripple effect of your story. Visualize the people who might benefit from hearing your journey of self-acceptance. Imagine how each person, in turn, might share their own insights with others, creating a web of support and inspiration. This exercise helps you see that your journey has the potential to contribute to something greater. Number four, write down how you'd like to impact others. Take a moment to reflect on how you want to inspire others. Do you want to offer them courage, self-compassion, or resilience? How can you embody these qualities in your daily interactions? This reflection can serve as a guide for how you show up in your relationships and communities. Number five, identify small steps to share your journey. Think of a few ways you can start sharing your journey, whether through writing, conversations, or social media. Start small, and remember that even a simple act of openness can have a profound impact on someone else. Self-acceptance as a collective gift. Self-acceptance is a gift that grows as it is shared. When you live authentically, embracing both your strengths and vulnerabilities, you remind others of their own worth. By showing that self-acceptance is a journey, full of highs and lows, growth and setbacks, you create a realistic, encouraging vision for others who may be struggling. Sharing your journey doesn't require perfection, it requires sincerity. Each moment of openness, each story, each act of kindness becomes part of a larger movement toward acceptance. You don't need to have all the answers or be fully evolved to inspire others. Simply by showing up as yourself, you offer others permission to do the same, 
creating a world where self-worth and authenticity are celebrated. As you continue along this path of self-acceptance, remember that your journey is a powerful tool, not only for your own growth, but also for uplifting those around you. Together, as a collective, we move closer to a world that values each person's unique path, honoring the richness of our diverse experiences. In sharing your journey, you contribute to a legacy of compassion, connection, and courage that will inspire others to live freely and fully, just as they are. Conclusion, coming full circle, returning to your true self. In this journey of self-acceptance, we've peeled back layers of expectation, judgment, and conditioning, those subtle yet powerful forces that shape who we think we should be. Beneath these layers lies something essential and timeless. Our true self, the version of us untouched by others' opinions and free from the constraints of perfection. Embracing self-acceptance is a homecoming, a return to the core of who we are. It's a journey of rediscovery, where we learn that our worth was never conditional, never dependent on how we measure up, and never diminished by our imperfections. When we allow ourselves to be exactly who we are, without apology or pretense, we experience a profound freedom. We no longer carry the weight of trying to fit in or the burden of molding ourselves to meet others' expectations. Instead, we stand grounded in authenticity, knowing that our unique path, with all its twists, turns, and transformations, is worthy of respect and celebration. There is joy in living authentically, in showing up fully as ourselves, and in knowing that our value does not rely on validation from the outside world. As you close this book, I invite you to continue this journey of self-acceptance with a sense of curiosity and compassion. Life will continue to present challenges and new experiences, and you will continue to grow and evolve. Let self-acceptance be the foundation upon which you navigate these changes. Remember, self-acceptance is not about arriving at a perfect version of yourself. It's about embracing each moment of your journey as valuable and meaningful. May you go forward with the courage to live as you are, honoring your individuality and embracing your evolution. Use this foundation of self-acceptance to build deeper connections, to experience life with openness, and to inspire others to walk their own paths. And when you look in the mirror, may you see not only the person you are today, but also the strength, resilience, and beauty of the true self who has been with you all along. This is the gift of self-acceptance, a life lived with authenticity, freedom, and a deep, unshakable joy. Welcome home.